Well, happy Friday, everyone. Um, what I want to do this morning is begin by asking a question that I've been asked numerous times. Um, and men, most people have wondered it. Uh, and so many of them probably haven't asked it, but I have been asked this question many times. And it's this, Jason, why did you start a church? Jason, why did you move back to Memphis back in 2009, start going to seminary, and why did you start a church? Because to be honest, if you knew me in high school and you knew me in early college, uh, starting a church was not on my radar. I didn't go to college to start a church. I studied financial management. I started uh, in engineering and then switched to business, which is the, the track that most engineering students take, is they start in engineering and they switch to business. So what in the world happened between when I left Memphis to go to college and then when I moved back to Memphis to start a church? What, what, what is the reason why I'm in Memphis? Why did we start a church? Why, why are we doing what we're doing? Why is that, that me as a Christian, uh, I'm living the life that I've lived? Well, I think there's a couple of stories that really hammer home a key theological truth. Um, I can remember in high school, being uh, the kid who's extremely extroverted. Uh, but as an extrovert, one of the things that uh, I felt myself constantly needing was attention, constantly needing affirmation. I constantly needed affection and approval from people. I can remember going on a, a, like, it was basically a retreat, like a Christian retreat called Chrysalis. Maybe you've heard of it. But I can remember going on a Chrysalis retreat and when I went on that chrysalis retreat, the love of Christ became so real to me because I realized so many people who loved Jesus loved me because I was their brother in Christ. And all of the sudden, me as this extrovert who constantly needs attention and affirmation began to realize that I had more affection and love than I could have ever imagined from the community of Jesus Christ. So then, fast forward a little bit, I go to college. And all of a sudden I get to college and I begin to realize uh, by going to a specific church, New Spring in South Carolina, um, that I could actually go to church and understand who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. And I can remember the first couple of services I went to at that church, like sitting there and being like, wait, I'm, it's actually possible for me to go to church and to get something out of it and to understand it and not just... Um, sit here and be like, oh, I'm glad I'm in church so I can cross this off my list. Like I was waking up at 745 on Sunday mornings in college uh, wanting to go to church, excited about going to church. I realized that. I can remember in January of 2006 sitting in the back of a Young Life camp, uh, the club room at Windy Gap. For those of you who are familiar with what Windy Gap is, it's a camp in North Carolina. I went there on a weekend uh, I was planning to be a Young Life leader and training to be a Young Life leader, and I can remember sitting in the back of that club room and hearing my first Young Life crosstalk, where the speaker was speaking to high school students, but I mean, I was sitting in the back as a young college student, and I heard, played out in a way that I'd never heard before, the love of Jesus on the cross of Christ. And all of a sudden, I heard about the nails in his wrists and his feet, things I knew. I knew of these things. I knew that Jesus died for me, but the way that it was being played out, it, it changed my heart. And I began to think about all of these milestones in the community that I had in college of people who loved me so well and, and the life that, that I experienced during those four years and really the year or two of high school leading up to that, it changed me. It absolutely, positively changed me. And the love of Christ became so real to me and it propelled me to live a different life. As I was experiencing those things, the Lord began to push on my heart and say, Jason, as a changed person, I want you to go back to Memphis and start a church. Like that was not on my, I'd never taught anything, spoken publicly. I'd never, I'd never done any of those things. But there was a verse, it's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Paul writes in chapter 2 a verse that really and truly uh, has meant so much to me uh, and is really kind of define the way that I want to live my life because Jesus has changed me. Let me read verse 8. It says this, Paul's writing, Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. 
And just as someone who has been changed by the Lord and been loved by the Lord, um, I've, I've experienced forgiveness. Uh, I didn't start a church because I was trying to earn God's love. I started the church because God poured out his love on me in ways that I, I can't still even wrap my mind around. And that God who loved me so much said, hey, Jason, I want you to love other people. I want you to do this and walk in this capacity. But really and truly, that's why we as Christians, maybe you're not called to start a church, um, but you're called to love people as a Christian. That's why we do what we do. It's because we've experienced the love of Christ and he has changed us. He has molded us. He has shaped us. And because of that, we go and we live different lives. It's because of that that I want to live out verse 8. There's people in my life, people in my church, even you on the internet. I want to share my life with you so that you can see who Jesus is working in me. And maybe if you're not a Christian, you would trust in him and see that he is truth. He is purpose. He is He is what you're truly looking for. And those of you who know Jesus, maybe you'd be encouraged um, by the mistakes that I make and by maybe some of the victories that I have that Um, my me sharing my life with you, that you would be encouraged in your walk with Christ. So as Christians, um, I pray that we would live changed lives. I pray that we would seek to emulate Paul and we would seek to emulate the life that he lived in a lot of different ways, including the fact that he was willing to share um, his life, not just the gospel. It wasn't just, I'm going to share the gospel with you, but I would share my life with you, pour myself out so that you too may experience the love of Christ as I have. So Hope this was helpful on this Friday. I hope you have a great weekend. I'm sure I'll see all of you soon.